Okay. And please share your screen. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Um, today I will continue like from Fred's last week's presentation to further introduce the, the diffusion model and score-based model. And the last time uh, from uh, Fred's presentation, he's mostly starting from like a bottom to up, that is starting from the mathematical background and the VAE and how we can go from the hierarchical VAE to the diffusion. And maybe today I, I will more focus on the application side that from top to down, to say that uh, or like uh, why we want to, why the diffusion model is uh, could be a better generating model and uh, like why we design some like each like a component. Yeah. Firstly, uh, before uh, like introducing the details, we will probably can show that some of the like the recent uh, uh, success of generative model. Yeah, you probably have heard about some of you. For example, like this is the one that generative uh, the, the image gen people work conducting in Google that have taken the text input and the generate a, uh, like, a, like an image describing this text. And as you can see, many of like this generated uh, images are not uh, like a scene uh, uh, like a bit from the internet. So that the, the model in, indeed have the capacities to compose like uh, the, the, the the information from the text and generate high fidelity images. And also, uh, I think last in last year's Erin group, I also discussed described this kind of disco diffusions demo, and they also like utilizing some like high art images to train the model and uh, have the ability to 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 conduct a very like uh, surprising well text to image generation. And uh, also uh, like both these several works are like based on like diffusion like met methods that as you can see, turning from the, the, the like the random noise and iteratively uh, like refine the, the images eventually be a very high fidelity images. Also there's uh, like uh, this kind of diffusion model has some greater applications to some uh, like in painting and edit, image editing jobs. For example, this as the as the edit work uh, have the ability to just given the model a simple sketch, for example, just a like, ran, like random, like a uh, like color, color jobs. And uh, the model can utilizing the diffusion architecture to somehow generate the high fidelity real images. And more recently, Maybe just one month ago, like still the same group in Google have conducted a, a, a video diffusion model that can tries to still the, 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 taking the text as input, but this time they generate a, like a short clip of videos. And uh, although it is still in a very like early stage, but it's like the first work that in this direction I really have like uh, like not bad results. Yeah, so. Um, the reason that the uh, recent days people uh, this kind of generative AI have uh, have received such success, uh, success success is mainly because of two things. First is a more like powerful fundamental model trained from like large scale image capture data sets, and the other thing is about uh, the uh, the, ad the advance uh, like the advance of generative model itself, and which is what uh, the focus of today's uh, like presentation about the noise diffusion model, and also another trend called a score-based generative model. And uh, like uh, this two like line of research didn't uh, converge with each other. Actually, they motivate from very different uh, like perspective, but eventually after like, a, like a several years of iterations, they finally found that maybe they, uh, like, they can utilize in the, like a single framework to unify these two directions. And, uh, uh, also, several, uh, like several very interesting and uh, like uh, uh, like very 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 beautiful works have been derived from these directions. So maybe we can go, go for details today. And uh, so that's firstly uh, like introducing the de noise diffusion probabilistic models. So uh, before introducing that, we can go uh, we can briefly uh, like a give some introduce of a background. Before the diffusion, like the most famous and popular and uh, like uh, generating model is probably the GAN. And uh, the GAN is like a, a more like an implicit generating model that it didn't really models the true density or the distribution of the data points. 
But instead, it takes a noise uh, epsilon drawn from Gaussian distribution as input and uh, utilizing a neural, deep neural network to mimic the sampling stage to, to like to turn the noisy image into like a true, uh, like a, maybe uh, like a high fidelity images. And uh, they also have an adversarial network or like a loss to try a guide the model to discriminate, uh, uh, to, 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 to like fool the discriminator about uh, like uh, how real their, their generated image is. Another trend of like research is called the explicit model that really uh, that uh, wishes that they can try to modify the model and that it really represents a model about probability density or the mass function Px. For example, uh, many kind of the research going back to early days can be like a Bayesian network, um, MRF, autoregressive models, and 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 in the recent past five years, people have seen designs of flow-based models. This kind of the models have the uh, advantage that they can uh, truly model the likelihood of the data points, and uh, from that distribution, they can sample the data points and estimate uh, like how the likelihood each data point be uh, belongs to a data distribution. But the comes is that most of these kind of the model have some very, very specific model design and not very general to arbitrary model neural, deep neural architectures. And also uh, to, uh, to somehow estimate and model the density, people need to do the normalization. And this kind of the uh, operations is very, uh, <coughs> You know, like uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard to do, which is the reason why mo most of the previous uh, works in this line have some specific model design. And uh, like to do this kind of normalization, we can give a very uh, na uh, like naive like understanding of that. For example, given the arbitrary x, uh, instead of tr truly getting like the final density function p theta. Uh, we can utilize in the like either a neural model or the other models to get a function f theta to somehow quantify that uh, the, how likely this, 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 this data is generated. However, this f theta is not necessary to be normalized. To make it really uh, like the distribution function, we need to have a z theta as the denominator to make it normalized so that it sum up to be one. But this kind of z theta is mostly intractable and harder to like really enumerate especially over like high dimensional data spaces. So uh, diffusion model and also the score based model somehow takes in between they, uh, instead of really uh, like models, the true uh, like, um, like dens uh, density function, they somehow models more like the uh, procedure or the sampling procedure, like uh, that it turns the noises to the, uh, to the final images. However, instead of like, uh, uh, again, that direct, uh, all rely on the neural network to, to mimic this procedure, they still have some like more controllable mathematical tools, either for diffusion model, it is like Gaussian process, uh, uh, and also uh, like in a score-based model, it is like the gradient, uh, like a, uh, like a uh, Lagrange pro dynamics to uh, trying to simulate uh, the sampling procedures. In this way, they have the advantage that they still uh, can utilize in arbitrary neural architectures to model this generative procedure, but still have some advantage that they can utilizing the final uh, like uh, model to reinvert uh, re to the uh, somehow like a density estimation. Yeah. So um, more more in high level, what diffusion uh, the noise in diffusion model did is that given arbitrary image they have like a forward diffusion process that gradually adds some noise to each of the inputs, for example, each of the previous data points. For example, given like this uh, original cat image, they were step-by-step step adding some Gaussian noises uh, to the original, uh, to, the uh, to the previous images, and eventually co converges to uh, pure random noises. And, uh, um, this so forward path is, can be regarded as you de or like destroy the image or like a, a given like a or from the physics perspective, given like a, a previous very ordered state, you added some noise to like, a, like turn it into a more like a random and a disordered state. But the, what the model wants, uh, what, what this diffusion model wants the model to, uh, to train this model is to do it reversely. I suppose that the model takes it as a noise as input, the wishes the model can 
and reversely reconstruct the data points step by step, so that at each step, uh, so that at each step they can generate a better like a, a, a like image that contains more contents and quality. Uh, is there any problem? Uh, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, more formally, uh, um, the diffusion process tries to utilize a sim uh, very simple Gaussian uh, like uh, procedure to conduct it, this forward uh, distortion, uh, this distortion or destruction destruction procedure. For, uh, given like uh, uh, each data point acts uh, uh, at time step t as like uh, like uh, an image uh, image state as uh, for uh, like on on this procedure. Mm. Uh, each state of the distortion can be regarded as qxt given xt plus one as a normal distribution taking taking the like the uh, combination of the past image xt plus minus one and the random noise as combination to be its mean and uh, random noise as a Gaussian uh, as, a, as a variance. In this way, it, uh, it simply be, can be regarded as like xt is xt plus minus one plus is a smaller like a, like a random noises. And uh, for for the sampling stage, or the model, uh, and, and since this, uh, we we all know that, that uh, by applying multiple like Gaussian added together, it can we, we like we can uh, like uh, still like uh, um, two Gaussian by adding together is still a Gaussian, so that uh, uh, eventual x t, which is the final noise, can be like uh, uh, written as like the starting from the initial image x uh, x zero and. Uh, like adding all of the noises in uh, following this line. And uh, uh, this can be written as this sampling procedure if we want to generate a, 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 like a images at arbitrary state T, which is X T equals to like uh, uh, the, 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 st uh, the state variable alpha times the uh, initial image X zero plus a small uh, like noise times uh, like the scaling weights. And uh, the, both the scaling weights for the original image and the noise are some call like a, a tunable if we want to like change the scale of each, uh, each state's noise. Yeah. So I have a practical question because we mm -hmm. know that when T goes to many steps, uh, so in the end it, it becomes like random noise, right? Yeah. So then for the random noise, the mean should be zero, but uh, in practice, when we represent a uh, image for each picture, uh, let's say we have three channels, then for each channel, actually it's between zero and 255. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so how we can turn that uh, like a negative value or zero value into some pixel value in practice? So as I said, uh, the the, this kind of diffusion model, what it wants to do is to reverse the distortion state. So as you can see, when it did each step of the distortion, the, the mean will be reduced from like its uh, like original pixel space. For example, as you can see, the mean is uh, right now is uh, have a scaling term in like a square root of one minus beta. So that uh, if the original state, the mean is positive value, after a certain state of, uh, for example, after T increases, eventually it will converge to zero. And what the, the re, reverse thing want to do is to step-by-step step add the true image information. So the distortion stage is not what people did to generate the image. What a generation sampling procedure is this reverse denoising stage. And at each stage, they will utilizing the neural network to predict the somehow like the added information to be add, uh, to somehow recover the, the the previous state of image and this predicted value this mean is not zero so by uh, uh, like a predicting for multiple state at the very end this mean is not zero did i answer the question so in other words like this is just illustration indeed during this process for the diff forward diffusion process we could have some value which is negative but it doesn't matter uh, why it is negative? Because it's like sample from Gaussian distribution with mm -hmm. mean close to zero, right? So then definitely it's possible that you get some samples that 
that is negative. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is indeed possible that it can sample a negative value. But eventually, if we go, uh, like, uh, put the t to infinity, then it should convert to uh, to a mean uh, to a Gaussian normal distribution where its mean is zero. But uh, for the sampling stage, it, it is indeed possible that it can have some either positive or negative value. Mm. So, but it doesn't affect anything because this figure is just illustration because we do not really have to and visualize that in the image setting. The yeah. negative value does not matter. Oh, you mean for visualization, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah. Because for, for pixel value, it's like a, a value between zero and uh, 255. Of course, we can do some normalization, maybe do some, yeah, I, I, I guess there was some shift or something that it can help us to uh, get rid of this problem. Yeah, that, that is indeed a question. I didn't think about that. There's yeah, a practical I, question, yeah, I think. I guess it's not a yeah, yeah, yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Probably for visualization, uh, I, they, I think they should do some normalization to, for example, add a list of making their minimal value to be zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So indeed, the, the value can, can be negative when, when we do the sampling. So um, then go back to the what happened to a distribution in the forward uh, diffusion. So far, uh, so far we somehow di discussed the like the transition from like initial x0 to xt. But eventually, if we want to sample something, we want to have like a care about x, like a, the like a, pro, like a density or distribution over at, at arbitrary x, xt, uh, give a get and get rid of the input data point x0. But this part is somehow harder to be modeled, mostly because that uh, like the we, we, we can have arbitrary uh, like a, like arbitrary uh, like a, a large set of like a, uh, data data points in the training data sets and it's very hard to modify uh, the model its marginal distribution so uh, in realistic like most people utilizing the ancestral sampling they first sample the, uh, the, the empirical data points from data data sets and uh, following like this uh, like uh, like uh, marginalization, uh, like marginalization to in integration to make uh, somehow estimate the final eventual QT, which uh, diffuse the data distribution. And uh, we can here have a very simple one dimensional use case, uh, like illustration here. Like uh, it, it, at, at, at a, uh, uh, the first stage, it is a QX0, which is like the true data distribution we want to model. And uh, by adding some this kind of Gaussian like a uh, uh, like, like procedure for each step. Eventually, it is can be regarded as uh, as like uh, applying a diffusion kernel, or in these cases, it's a Gaussian convolution kernel to make it eventually uh, uh, like a step by step to be gradually smoother and eventually be a normal distribution. Yeah. And at every state, we will utilizing like a like a distribution uh, at every, at each step to sample a new data points. And uh, yeah, it is indeed, it can be positive or negative. Okay, uh, now I have introduced about the forward uh, procedure. Daniel, there's a hand raised. Oh. Yeah, Fred, Fred had a question. Yeah, I just want to add a comment about the Gaussian convolution. It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting point because if you look at the convolution, this is actually called the fundamental solution of the heat equation. So you can kind of uh, make some analogy here, like each step is like doing a convolution with the heat kernel, you know, because the heat kernel is like the Gaussian distribution, but just, just a connection. Yeah, 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 thanks for the comments. Yeah, indeed have the connection, but I'm uh, not sure whether it is the equivalent because in here, like, uh, it, 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 if in the, in the empirical setup we didn't uh, really did uh, the like the, uh, the marginalization over every data uh, like a, uh, like data points in the queues x zero, but simple simply just sample some uh, the empirical data points. But indeed, uh, like uh, this Gaussian convolution can be hydro analogy with the heat kernel. <coughs> Till now, I have introduced how, how we did to do the like the distortion. And uh, 
the reason we uh, uh, they they choose this Gaussian convolution or this kind of Gaussian process to do this to add in this noise is simply because that uh, this mm, it is the simplest uh, it's somewhat simple to do it in reversely. If we get to the Gaussian uh, as, as a noise to add it to each, each data samples, if we model it in the reverse, it is simply just a minus uh, like the noise that sample from a prior state. And uh, in this way, if we want to train the model to model this kind of procedure, we have we can have some like uh, like uh, mature mathematical tools to, to derive some like uh, objective or loss function. And uh, this is like the main like uh, motivation of choosing the Gaussian procedures to do this kind of like forward and reverse pass. And then now we can try to introduce how we train the model to do it reversely. And uh, still, at, uh, if we are doing it reversely, we are starting from the final like state, which is uh, QXT, X big T. And uh, uh, if we train the model well, then to the empirical QT, uh, like predicted by our model, should be similar or closely to a normal distribution. X, uh, where like the mean is zero and uh, and uh, the and uh, we have the diagonal variance. And uh, what we eventually want to get is a p theta x zero uh, given uh, given the x t. And uh, to to do it, we can somehow uh, some following like the reverse procedure to do it uh, step by step and. Uh, each state, we will generate a P, uh, x t minus one from x t, and uh, this can be since the forward path is a uh, is a Gaussian procedure, the reverse path, as I said, can be similar to be regarded as a normal distribution. That uh, is uh, here, like the mean is like like predicted by our model, which is like uh, we here like model uh, like uh, denoted it as mu theta with x t and the t as input. So it can be regarded as that the neural network model taking the like a previous like image, which is more noisy as an input to generate a mean and utilizing this mean and the, the uh, standard variance to generate a sample like the more like a uh, informative data point uh, like images. So uh, in this way, or uh, if we for, uh, like a uh, model the uh, like reverse procedure it, it, for, for each step as a Gaussian, then eventually we can model the whole like uh, like the like uh, like trajectory of distribution still by like a product of uh, several Gaussians. Yeah, and uh, to make it more concretely, if we want to train such a model, we uh, since it is like a Gaussian uh, uh, like a model, we have always have a like a like a very clean a uh, probabilistic uh, 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 like interpretation and the 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 background we can we can follow the traditional VAE methods to utilizing the variation upper bound to estimate the uh, to 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 for, to <clears throat> somehow make our like estimated uh, like a probability q to be closer to the true probability p and uh, uh, follow I I I I believe like Fred has has already derived this. Uh, bound and uh, also from this original paper in ICM 25 and also the the 2020s like revised uh, like a revised paper, people uh, we um, people have shown that this kind of final variational upper bound can be decomposed into three terms, as we can see that uh, the first term here LT can be regarded as that uh, like uh, at the very end uh, we want our final like QXT. Uh, to be closer to PXT, which is like the standard normal. And uh, this part can be simply uh, discarded because it is very simple to be controlled. And the last term is, uh, is vanilla-ly just uh, like the reconstruction loss, similar to the VAE loss. But uh, here we only consider the XT and the X1, which is uh, like the last uh, uh, minus one state and uh, the last state. And uh, since uh, it is like like, uh, like the last state, uh, Model it is it, to model the reconstruction part for this part, uh, for this it is not too hard so we can also uh, like discard it in at this stage. The most important thing here is the middle part, which is like uh, as we can see here is like a tail divergence between q x t minus one to uh, given x t and p x t minus one given x t. So we all know that the p uh, p x t minus one given x t is like adding uh, like a, a like a uh, um, 
reduce uh, go, uh like uh, added noise from like the past no uh, like the uh, uh, image to uh, like more informative no image so that the meaning of this uh, KL divergence is indeed to try, try to uh, like really uh, like minimize the distance of our models predictive like recovering like noises with the ground truth noise and so if if and if Mm, the model uh, like uh, get a very low like hair divergence for this part. It can be regarded as like the model can learns to iteratively like uh, remove the noise and uh, make iteratively refine the the model uh, the, the image from like a more noisy version to a more clean version. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you want to get like a like like step by step derivation, you can go back to the previous paper. And also I have tried to reproduce the results and uh, uh, some added some notes here with, for example, uh, this stage is utilizing Markov train and uh, later on we want to somehow mimic the KL divergence. But this, two, uh, the, uh, this derivation is not very hard. So I will just skip the details here uh, right now. If you're interested and also uh, later on finding some difficulty to, to, to like write it, you can uh, like chat with me and we can somehow provide some like uh, comments for it. Okay, so uh, right now we have uh, we have known that to somehow model the, the uh, or training such diffusion model, the key is to reduce the KL divergence between our estimated uh, like a probability or empirical probability with the ground truth P theta. And uh, uh, to somehow or like, uh, uh, so, so, so to, to somehow implement this, uh, we have the, the advantage that this, this P theta is a Gaussian, so that it is uh, like a tractable and we can indeed write in this like uh, the, the, the deterministic uh, like uh, function, uh, like formula from how we can derive from xt to xt minus one. But uh, the reason is because that uh, this xt can be regarded as like uh, start, as we previously mentioned by adding up a multiple like a Gaussian uh, procedures together the state uh, all of the together is still a Gaussian so that each xt can be regarded as that starting from the initial image x0 adding like the grad, uh, noise gradually and uh, eventually be xt and now we uh, based on that we can somehow replace the list curve divergence to like a Direct probability, uh, like a formula, uh, to, to, you know, like direct formula between like the two, like a, to, uh, like a normal distributions mean, and uh, the, the first one is our model's predictive mu theta given x t and t, and the other is like the the the, the true version that are taking all of the possible theta as in as as possibility to get the mean, uh, like the average mean, and. Uh, uh, as we know that this xt can be regarded as uh, at, uh, starting from x0 and adding the noise. So that uh, the, the first part, uh, the, uh, the x0 times the scaling can be uh, like, a, uh, like, like removed for by minusing these two x2 two, two terms. So that uh, eventually what we, we, what we really what we need to model is like the true issue that we sample for in the forward pass uh, with the one that the model predict, which is the theta uh, taking the past state of the xt as input. Yeah. So I, this is the eventual like a loss function that we if we want to train like the diffusion model. So um, it is like a, in the forward pass we will do the sampling to add the noise, and at each state we will uh, like record the sampling noise we used to like adding the noise. And in the reverse state, we want to like uh, utilizing our uh, like a neural model to predict the, the sample the noise we added to the to the original image at each step. In this way, it can be regarded as a denoising procedure. Okay, and uh, yeah, if we write down the training formula, it can be regarded as this. So uh, during uh, 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 so so in the re in, in the forward state, we will sample. Out of the issue to 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 make the, the trajectory of the of of of, of, of image at, at and at each state we were recording this image issue, issue noise and uh, at the reverse training state we will try to minimize the distance between the true noise with our model's prediction 
to make the denoisings and uh, make, somehow iteratively refine the model. And given such a great, uh, like a trained model in the sampling stage, if we want to like uh, generate a new data, data points, we can simply just utilize our predicted, uh, like a trained model to, to somehow uh, like generate uh, one step of refinement state from the pure random noise. And eventually it can, it can uh, generate from the like random noise images to, uh, to a eventual image. Yeah. And still like uh, I somehow derived how we can uh, turn from the care divergence to the eventual like the uh, like uh, uh, objective, like, like just a tech, uh, like uh, comparing with the uh, eventual like model predictions uh, noise with the ground truth noise. So yeah, do, you, do you mind to go in slower? Just to try to explain it line by line. Uh, yeah. Um, the reason I stick it is because I, after I uh, read the Fred's talk, I, I see that he also have a uh, like few direct derivation for this part. But uh, we can, we can obviously do it again to like understand it might be maybe more deeply this time. So uh, I think we have already got under, got some understanding of this care divergence part. So which means that uh, this LT minus one equals to uh, the, the true P theta X T minus one given from X T compared with like Q T minus one given X T and X zero. And here, since the P theta X T minus one from X T is a normal distribution. So we can somehow like rewritten this, uh, uh, this X T of like uh, trying to, trying to like uh, this formula by like uh, summing from like uh, uh, the summing the normal uh, like normal procedure from zero to t, so that uh, at each state we will have like a mu x t uh, like like a previous x t uh, like uh, as input and added a small small noise and by summing up together the the first scaling term will be, can be like a going up to be like a square root of the alpha t. And uh, the second term is the uh, square root of y minus alpha t minus a uh, dot product with a uh, random noise. Yeah, this is for the p theta x t part. And uh, given that we want to somehow model the q part and which is the, our model's prediction. And for this part, uh, uh, yeah, before that we can sum, uh, we can firstly change like uh, uh, this x uh, this x to to somehow derive our our like uh, to 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 back propagate derive our like a mean because like uh, each state of this uh, this mean can be regarded as like the x t minus the added noise derived uh, and divided by the uh, like the like uh, the variance term. In this way, this is like the, the inverse reprimandization of the mean part. Yeah, it can, this is from, draw from like the original normal distribution part. And the, this is, if show theta x t is our like model's prediction. And based on that, we can, what we need is to simply just compare this, our model's predicted mu with the ground truth mu like, drawn from here. And, uh, uh, by putting like the issue back to this xt, uh, we can we, we so that we can get this term. Yeah, probably it was uh, I skip a few like a uh, line here. I'm so trying sure. to understand for the third line, just from the definition of each conditional property like xt minus one give xt. So then we are able to get the distribution for xt, which you is mean, dependent on x0 and this epsilon. You mean for the second order third? For the second one, it's just from our model construction, right? Yeah. But for the third one, for the second one, yeah. second line to provide this uh, reverse kind of, for each step, how we can generate from uh, 
the previous step to the next step. Mm -hmm. And for this xt, can you explain the notation for xt uh, with x0 and epsilon? Yeah, uh, maybe I can. Is that a uh, forward stage? Because it seems to me. Yeah, probably I can utilize in the forward denotation because in my part, I skip a few lines. Uh, so in in the in in uh, the the one that I write is that x t is equal to this upper t x zero plus a small number e this uh do for each x t it means that uh, the image uh, like uh, like the latent variable state at uh, each state t and uh, That's the a forward. initial this x t is from the forward uh, state for right? for both uh yeah it's for forward. The, so that uh, the initial image, which is the original image, is x zero, and the final one is x big t. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we write this part, it, it, this part, it is in the forward state. It is because at each state we can, uh, as well as I as I said, we draw from a Gaussian distribu normal distribution to from uh, to take the previous x t minus one as a mean and adding the small noise, so that and adding the like the scaling alpha t here. And uh, this alpha t with the hat is like the uh, multiply of alpha t uh, go, go back to alpha one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a simplified abbreviation of this. So in this way, we can somehow have a reprimatization of the, the, the x key so that we don't really need to like draw from like the likelihood, but we yeah. can simply write a deterministic uh, like a formula from x key to x zero. Yeah. yeah, xt is a function of epsilon, so it's also a distribution. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a random variable. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then we can go to like uh, uh, like, like this part. So since we know that the xt is can be written as a deterministic function from x0 with a the noise, then we if we want to compare the care divergence between like the true distribution with the, the, the our predicted one, all we need to compare is like the mean. So because like it both are like a, like like a normal, so that um, uh, and based on our previous like a, like a deterministic function, we can somehow like rewritten the mu to be x t minus the epsilon and divided by the alpha. This is like simply just uh, like put the noise to the left hand side and divided the scaling term. So so, mm -hmm. are you saying that we solve this epsilon and then we can calculate its mean? I didn't quite get this part. Uh, this epsilon is not calculate. It is like a, just a, assume that we already got that. For example, in the forward path, we already record every issue state. Okay, so it's, each it's a step we add state. some noise so that's related to the epsilon t. Yeah, yeah. So so we sample multiple uh, a trajectory and we will record every epsilon t. So each each epsilon t is not random variable but a, a true value that we already know. Um, yeah. What's I think I, I'm confused by the notation here. What's the mean tilde t? Mu t tilde, what does that mean? So previously we already say, okay, x t follows some distribution because we already represent as a function of epsilon. So then I think this mu t should be related to x t somehow. But so I didn't quite get this part. Yeah, I think this mu t is related to x t because it is derived from x t. In the meaning of tilde is be, it just be, just uh, trying to say that it is like a ground truth value, because we simply just calculated it by uh, like a plus x t minus like the like a, we recorded the epsilon t. So it is like a, you can regard it as a label value. The this mu t I guess that's the mean of some distribution or some random yeah. variable. Which random uh, variable? Um, it is like if we send in the forward path, if we draw p theta x t minus one from x t, uh, we will be utilizing this mu to be the mean. And uh, the adding a tilde means that we consider all of uh, like, the, uh, the, uh, like the current state of the mu and uh, it show an x to be like uh, this mu t. So I think it should have a bracket with x t and t. So it should be mu t tilde with x t and t, yeah. Yeah, I think this one is, is more accurate. It's mu t tilde with x t and x zero as input. 
this is more accurate. No. And this was, is used to sample the like it, it is the ground it is used to be the ground truth the reverse procedure if we get the xt minus one from xt. Is that for the conditional probability xt minus one given xt? Yeah, it is conditional probability. Okay. And the condition is lying that the mu is conditional on xt. Yeah. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. The reason we can derive it, as I said, is because when we derive xt from xt minus one, we utilize a Gaussian. So that the reverse manner is still a Gaussian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I think I have uh, like introduced a uh, clear about what is the multi tilde, which is the ground truth like a uh, mean when we do the reverse procedure. And we what we want to do is our uh, like keep or try to make our model's prediction mu theta to be closer to it. And similarly, we can rewrite our model's prediction as this one. So that our model's predicted is uh, still an actual theta, which is a small noise. And by deduct this xt part, because these are the same, we, are, we only, all we need to make, uh, to minimize is the distance between our predicted noise time uh, multiplied with a scaling term to the ground truth actual t. Is it clear right now? I think I know the overall picture, but for the mathematical details, I think, yeah, I probably need extra time, but since we don't have that much time, okay, probably can continue. Yeah, yeah, I somehow skip uh, several, like, uh, for example, why we have the like, divergence and why we have like, uh, like maybe maybe it is a little bit confused about the reverse and the forward pass. Probably I think the the really the original paper or this blog blog post will be more helpful to understand yeah. it. More Last deeply. time Fred has introduced the how we can derive according to the model construction the kind of diffusion model how how we can uh, decompose that into three k or divergence. So for that part we have recovered. Fred has. Um, yeah, write all the derivation in the iPad, which is good. And then mm -hmm. for for the like training part, I think we didn't really cover in detail. So that's why I was asking for the details. Oh, okay. So I think the key motivation, uh, like the intuition is that since there is a Gaussian probability, uh, like, like a sampling. So after we have like the forward pass, in the reverse pass, we can somehow write the ground truth like a mean, given derived from our pre, uh, like a recorded, no, uh, added noise issue. So that all we need is just to make our predicted uh, like noise to be similar to the ground truth one. If it is a more complicated uh, like a procedure, maybe we cannot simply just write a reverse like a procedure. But since it is a Gaussian, it is simple. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, uh, so from my understanding, the reason why the diffusion model works somehow empirically better than like the, the, the GAN model and the other is that they didn't simply rely on a single like neural model to just train to get everything. But it is more similar to the RN model that uh, it just tra uh, treats the issue like a whole neural net network as like the uh, single unit to like refine the model, like, like the image. And it can allow the model to to have a like long trajectory to iteratively update it, and eventually like like get get good results. So you have like somehow uh, allows the model to have more capacity to generate high fidelity images, and uh, to make it work, it also needs to have some specific model architecture design articulated for such a diffusion procedure. For example, uh, most of the recent uh, like. Uh, like for example, the model utilizing image N, utilizing the UNET architecture, which is similar uh, to that, uh, like uh, doing like the same, uh, mostly previously utilizing for uh, like a segmentation and also some like uh, image to image translation tasks. And uh, since that each state of like the uh, like a, uh, like the noising might be a little bit different. So they will add a specific, specific time representation similar to the position encoding in BERT 
add it into like each you know, like layer of a unit. And uh, yeah. So also like oh. Uh, and also the, this this slide is for some of the advanced topics that uh, how we can somehow train the noise scheduling uh, for like the uh, for one minus beta term and uh, the alpha uh, the inverse of the alpha term. And uh, for this two part, uh, it is somehow important to make the final, the final model works. In the as you can see, the, the usual model is proposed in 2015, but uh, not until 2020, people didn't utilize in, uh, take uh, attention to this methodology too much, mainly because that previously didn't have a very good empirical result. But in 2020, like the Jonathan Hall just simplified the, the diffusion model by making the order, order like the diffusion term to be equal, to be equal, or, or equal to one. And also like uh, adding, modify the mirror architecture a little bit to make it eventually work and this, and not even work, but significantly better than a GAN model. But uh, still that uh, this kind of very brute force, brute force uh, like treatment of the scaling term is not, a, not, maybe not an optimal solution. So later on, maybe uh, several paper works trying to see whether they can simultaneously learn both the, like the, a re reverse procedure with also the scaling term, uh, also including like the this year Aclear's 2022's BAS paper conducted by Zhu Jun's uh, group. Yeah, if you are interested, you can like uh, look at them, but I, based on the time, I will not spend too much about that. Yeah, but we can have like the rough idea of what, what this kind of scaling term means and also like what is the state of the, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the adding noise and uh, like the denoising tries to do. That suppose that uh, since we have no uh, previous show that each state of XT can be regard, uh, written as, as like the linear combination of like the, uh, the original data input with a, uh, 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 with, with a random noise. If we added, the, for example, the Fourier transform to that, we can somehow try to uh, gather the, the different uh, like a frequency of the information from each data points. And uh, in the forward diffusion part, uh, we, uh, empirically we can, uh, like uh, based on the analysis, we can find that the high frequency content is perturbed faster uh, at the early state. And uh, the low frequency terms will be somehow like perturbed uh, slower, which means that even at the last stage, uh, when the mo model is very, very noisy, the, the low frequency term is maybe still there, but the high frequency term will be dropped at a very early state. This somehow means that uh, during the forward pass, like uh, the most important, like the semantic, uh, the content regarding to some semantic and some details, which is regarding to some high frequency terms will be dropped very quickly. And uh, at the la later state, it will keep the like the low frequency terms and uh, slowly slowly uh, like uh, reduce that. This somehow means that uh, in the reverse state, if we do the denoising at the ver at a, that early state of the denoising, we are somehow recovering the low frequency content, uh, like uh, and also like a width of like the, the scaling step of how we drop it via the, uh, the, the the noise adding. And at the, the last two a few steps, we are doing like the uh, like the generating recovering the high frequency contents, so that obviously the weighting for recovering the high frequency terms and the low frequency term shouldn't be equally like treated. So uh, it, it should be better to somehow uh, treat maybe the the last few steps to be like a, for a higher weights and the, uh, the, the first few turns, which is recovering the low frequency to be maybe slower, a uh, slower, a uh, smaller. And uh, this is empirically why the 2020s work uh, uh, like make it better by treating all of the like turns to be equally to be one, then the, uh, by adding it together, together the, the learning weights for the final few turns will be higher. And uh, so this somehow empirically make that that model be better, but still that the most uh, the, like recent model in a few years trying to make it all learnable and also uh, there's a few work, like draw from some inspiration from this kind of Fourier transformation to learn this kind of weighting and which empirically got good much better results. Yeah. Uh, 
Lastly, we can somehow draw some connection with the hierarchical VIE, and which is also like Fred also discussed it in like last week's uh, discussion. But uh, we, we want to go too much about the like the mathematical details, but just empirically uh, list some of the main difference about the, uh, the diffusion model with the hierarchical VIE. So first in the diffusion model, uh, the, diff the encoder is fixed and we'll be utilizing to do like iterative sampling. Instead of like VAE, they have like a, somehow like a, a single model and adding some like a latent variable at like different layer of the models. So the, the hierarchical VAE is somehow in the model architecture it's more complex and uh, uh, maybe the data points are not su sufficient enough to train like the whole like a uh, super complex models. And also the latent variable for like a diffusion model is exactly the image because if we added the image, uh, the, the noises adding to the image, it has the same shape and uh, it has a more like a meaningful semantics about uh, what we want to recover and add it to the original image. Unlike that, uh, the VAE part, mostly it is just uh, like a one digit uh, like semantic encodings or something else, which uh, although they have higher interpretability, but uh, it somehow restrict uh, the flexibility to model these kind of latent variables. And also, like uh, the denoising model is shared across different time steps. It is uh, similar to the encoding part. And the model is trained with some reweighting of the variational bound instead of like the VAE part that they, they just treat it equally. And also in the previous example, I've shown that uh, we with some of our reweighting for each like a, uh, like a step of the denoising is it, it, very essential for making this diffusion model works. Yeah. In a summary, uh, right now we have to review the denoising, uh, the denoising diffusion probabilistic model. This model is trained by sampling from the forward diffusion process, training the noisy model to predict the noise. So, uh, and the, the 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 takeaway to make the like uh, diffusion model works lies in three things. First is uh, like a correct and neural architectures. For example, the UNet and most recently are combined with uh, like a visual transformers to somehow. Uh, allow the a single model as a unit to iteratively refine the model instead of like like in the traditional VAE part that just have the super large model as each layer do different things. And also uh, it has like the good like uh, object waiting for scale uh, like uh, treating like each different step to be to be different based on some heuristic or some learnable uh, objectives. Yeah. And uh, that's basically the, the introduction for the denoising diffusion probabilistic model. Do you know, do you have some question to it? Yeah. And uh, the next uh, part is about the score-based generating model that uh, mainly conducted by like Song Yang in like a Steve Ehrman's group. And uh, he is currently uh, joining OpenAI, and later on, like in next year, joining Caltech to be an IP. And uh, most of his past research is focusing on these score-based models. And uh, I happen to know his work in 2019, and that state, uh, maybe they have a very like a solid mathematical formula, but empirically it doesn't perform too well. But just maybe uh, like close to the gain methods. But later on, they also added some like. A, Mechanism similar to diffusion by adding some noises to make the, the this kind of scale a score based model more, like a, a more powerful and uh, and uh, that work also accepted uh, received the I I clear two thousand twenty one uh, like best papers so uh, and recently people somehow think that score based model and the diffusion model have some similar intuition and. Uh, can somehow utilize in some uh, SDE to be to be to be uh, to be modeled in the continuous time manners. So uh, I think it is good to include the score based model in this presentation. I'm not sure whether I have a time to finish all of them, and also uh, still maybe I can uh, skip some of the details today. But if you are interested in some of the work, probably I can spend more time to discussing more detail maybe next time. 
So the, the high level intuition of the score based model, if we go back to the to the initial like the motivation of why we want the diffusion and the score based model is that it is hard to directly model the final density function. And also uh, the implicit model is, is not that well to, to estimate the likelihood and also uh, have some drawbacks that it cannot cover a diversity or a, that, that like a diverse set of the sampling space. So instead, uh, maybe the alternative manner is that it's impossible that we didn't really like estimate the PX, but instead we just estimate the uh, like the log probability log probability density, or can be regarded as a gradient of uh, uh, of like this kind of uh, uh, like probability space, and they record this gradient of log probability density as a score. And uh, after they get this kind of score, like a like a, like a space and or the field, they can somehow utilizing some <coughs> sampling mechanism to uh, like or or similar to the uh, to the optimization to somehow draw samples by like uh, uh, taking the direction from this uh, score to eventually go to a like a convergence point as they are generating the data points. And this kind of a method have the advantage that they can bypass the normalizing uh, like, a, like a issues because it, previously, if we want to model, uh, like model the density function, we need a, like this Z theta to be a denominator. But if we take the log likelihood and the uh, gradient to that, the log of a constant value Z is all uh, the gradient of the log Z, uh, uh, no, no gradient, the log of the constant Z is always, uh, uh, sorry, the gradient of the log Z is always a zero because that uh, this Z theta is like the denominator, uh, it is a normalizing con constant term. So that in this way, we didn't really need to like, uh, uh, you know, like care too much about the, the normalizing uh, issues. And all we need to do is just to like uh, having like a good estimation of the gradient space, a uh, gradient of the like the probability density space. <clears throat> and uh, to make this kind of a score as uh, score based model work, we first need uh, the first step. Obviously, we need to do is the estimation about how we can get the uh, like a good enough uh, as theta to be closer to the gr uh, gradient of the log likelihood uh, log probability. And uh, to to make that work, uh, it, uh, we need to have a quantity matrix to somehow compare like a two like a Euclidean space or you can even field uh, over like the whole space. It is not simply just over the data sets or, or, or over the few data points, but instead uh, here we want to go over like a whole, like a, uh, like a distribution space. So in the very early, like 2019 paper of, uh, by the Song Yang, he tries to utilizing the, the score matching function that uh, being utilizing like in 2005. The basic idea is that uh, they somehow calculating the feature divergence between the, the predicted as theta with the ground truth uh, like log, log data points. And uh, by, adding, by integrating that, they can somehow, uh, the, the, this original paper have, have shown that it can be re, uh, written as that first is like the, the, the norm of their generated score. And the other is the trace of like the gradient of the, the, the predicted score. And uh, for this trace part, it needs to calculate the Jacobian of the S theta because it adds a, 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 a gradient over the score function and the score function is already like your estimated uh, gradients. So that uh, directly calculating this Jacobian could be really, uh, really slow and uh, no scalable. And uh, in that uh, 2019 paper, they somehow proposed a sliced uh, like a score matching to turn this as a theta to be a, a high dimensional S theta to be a single dimension through random projection. And in that way, calculating like the, the, the Jacobian over a one dimensional like vector is very simple and uh, can be somehow like more efficient. But uh, that kind of empirical result is not super good, but still can somehow alleviate the issue. And uh, the second problem is how after they got the good enough like a uh, score like uh, estimation, how they can draw sample from that. Uh, another manner is just, uh, as I said, doing some like a, uh, uh, 
just following like a score, like a direction to like a, to, to, to somehow similar to the SDV to somehow uh, try to uh, sample the data points that have the highest score. But in that case, it is very sim uh, uh, likely that the model just converted to some saddle points or some local minimum without really convert to a meaningful like an image data sample. So uh, a good alternative is that they can utilize in the Lagrange MCMC. This is also some introduced by like uh, Fred last, last week. And the basic idea is that at each step, they can simply just add in some like random noise to that and uh, uh, so that the, 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 the sampling procedure can somehow avoid dropping into or uh, stacking into some saddle points. And, uh, and the, the Lagrange like, like MCMC has some very good mathematical like properties that if, by doing so, it can somehow recover the ground truth like a uh, distribution over the space. But uh, Directly doing so uh, by uh, this two step. First thing, uh, estimating the good uh, score, uh, like uh, utilizing the uh, like uh, the, the, like uh, doing the score matching, either with some modification or just vanilla-ly over like, uh, like the empirical data sets. And next, uh, doing some like round depth dynamics seems to be a pipeline solution to do the sampling or generative model. But it turns out that uh, the generative results are super bad by combining these two styles so that as their like 2020s papers, they somehow uh, shows that by vanilla training on CIFAR 10, uh, the generative results just uh, mostly it's just a random noise and it didn't recover the high fidelity contents. And uh, in that paper, they uh, the reason they analyze that is uh, uh, the leak gas is because of like, uh, uh, if they just uh, simply just utilizing the uh, the Lagrange, Lagrange dynamics over like the their estimated uh, like the score space space, the most of the score based space uh, that they they didn't observe a data points will be very inaccurate. It's mainly because like the, this kind of the uh, uh, like the data uh, like a data space in the high dimension uh, like a data distribution in the high dimensional space is very sparse. And uh, even if we recently collect a large scale of the data sets compared to the complexity of the image, um, we still have a lot of space that we didn't observe. And for over that, since the, when they calculated the log P, it is um, the, the gradient of log P is somehow like a P log P. So that uh, um, if there is no P, then the, the estimated uh, score will be close, to, very close to zero. So that at those data, like uh, data regions, they will, won't have a very like a good uh, um, guessing for the for the direction towards the accurate regions. So one solution is to uh, like uh, solve this kind of the the, the problem. We, you can imagine is that support, if, if our like uh, observed the points in the whole data space is very sparse, what if we have some augmentation, for example, adding some noise, the, then it is somehow similar to the diffusion model. The basic idea is that given like the original the original image, they can somehow add in some noise to make it somehow uh, like uh, not only for, uh, like reside in its original data point space, so that uh, uh, compare by comparing this to like a heat map, we can see that by after adding in some noise, the observed uh, like data the spaces over like the whole space, uh, the data region over the whole space can be enlarged more, uh, significantly, so that. Over those like those regions, they can still get a, a not a, like a much better accurate uh, estimation of the score direction compared with uh, vanilla data points. But still, this have the issue that uh, uh, if we simply just add in some uh, like a set of noise to the original data sets, the score we estimate is just uh, fitting the like the noise the data sets instead of like the true data distributions. So uh, although, but it's but it already solved some problem, uh, like the problem of uh, like the, the, the inaccurate, uh, like a uh, score estimation for Lagrange dynamics. So following this line, uh, they, they needs to find out a way that they can have the adding the noise, but still trying to make the, the final score estimation to cover the true distribution density instead of just a single set of noise. So, uh, I think the, the, the solution might be 
uh, straightforward to you after we have learned about the diffusion. It is that we, uh, we can go from like the original data points and uh, choose different scale of the noise levels so that we can collect the multiple like, a, like a, a, this kind of data, of data fields with different uh, scale of the noise. So to the most, uh, to the most extreme uh, uh, cases, it is like maybe like the pure noises, but uh, maybe uh, like a, a few like data image information. And at the middle stage, maybe it will have like the uh, small distort distorted images. And we can we, we already know that in that case, we just drop some free high frequency information. So in that case, they want to train a single score function to somehow mimic the 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 uh, the like like the direction of uh, with different uh, like uh, noise levels. In this case, they can somehow cover the the spaces where the original data points didn't reside in, but also have an accurate uh, uh, like a uh, estimation of those data points that are closer to the true data points. Yeah. Uh, by doing so, they will uh, have a single estimation of this as theta with, with uh, like a different sigma i as input and uh, tries to learn the positive way, uh, like a union ex expectation of all of the, uh, the score matching loss and, and multiply with different posit positive weight. This positive weight it's very similar to the like a scaling term when we introduce the like uh, the dynamic uh, uh, the diffusion models, and uh, the second term, this kind of score matching term loss, is somehow just uh, doing the like the uh, field of, like a uh, L two distance between like the uh, the estimated probability uh, like a gradients with respect to the the ones that are in the data sets. So in this case, uh. They can somehow utilizing this kind of multiple noise levels to get uh, more accurate estimations. And uh, so, uh, if we draw the analogy to our like a forward pass diffusion process, uh, this kind of like a uh, score based method is very similar to that in the case that uh, it, it also tries to do like a uh, denoising uh, procedures that uh, you can regard it as that. At each at each noise level, they will have a scores uh, like a scores estimation, and they want to step by step by reducing this sigma from like a very high value to a low value to make it consistent and uh, more, more and more accurate. And eventually, they will utilize this sigma zero equals to zero to be the eventual uh, like a like a field to do the sampling. And in that case, that will be more accurate. And they will share the model parameters for like both uh, to, to estimate the gradients with uh, under different noise level, but maybe just treat a sigma as like the prior term or like a uh, like a uh, like similar to the, the, the previous position encodings. Maybe we can add into the neural layers. <clears throat> but the overall model, most of the model parameters will be shared, like to estimate different level of noise. Yeah. And uh, the good property of this kind of score-based model is that, as you can see, this aggregate score is no longer a procedure, but just uh, the arbitrary value they can choose. So that compared with like a discrete time, like a procedure of this kind of diffusion model, probably it can be uh, utilizing some continuous time, like a uh, uh, updating function or the procedure, uh, like a uh, like procedure functions or equations to estimate the final, like a. Uh, like uh, like a samplings, and uh, one way to do that is based on the stochastic di differential equations. So the basic idea is that uh, if we draw from the diffusion process pr procedures perspective, it is like suppose that our added uh, uh, noise uh, is super super small and uh, within like a continuous time that sigma t instead of a discrete time, then we can simply written our eventual like a uh, uh, xt. Because we previously have already written x k is equal uh, is a deterministic function to x zero. If we written it, this t in a continuous manner, then we can write in, like this differential equation to somehow de derive how we can go from like the the, the the original image to the final eventual ones. And uh, this kind of the method can uh, this kind of idea of S D E is exactly what we did for this kind of score based model. Because that at each different like the state with different noise level, 
we have like different uh, as as you can imagine like a score based uh, like a, a like a score distribution and uh, if we draw uh, like a sample from for example original data points and uh, following this kind of like perturbed distributions it is equivalent to like a or like following like a stochastic process process to eventually goes to a pure random Gaussian noise. Yeah. So uh, this is the idea of uh, Sonia's work in 2021 that uh, won the ICLR bias paper that somehow unifying their his previous score based model with the diffusion model. And uh, to uh, to do that, the the uh, the in the stochastic differential equation, we have like two terms. One is a deterministic term and the other is like a noise term. And in a noise term can be simply just to replace with uh, the, the added noise they used for to perturb the perturb the field sets. And uh, this F, theta, F, F term is the model's prediction to somehow uh, have the uh, uh, correct direction to, to, like, uh, uh, to, to somehow update this differential equation. And uh, these are some illustration of how they somehow utilizing this stochastic process to generate the image. So this is somehow different from like a diffusion model that they only have, for example, 10 step or 11 step. They are somehow have a very continuous like procedure to draw the, uh, to, to somehow sample the data points. And uh, this is a more like a com complete set of figures. And uh, uh, Somehow, like uh, to combine like this uh, the previous training objective that I have shown with different uh, like a, a set of uh, like noise to be a FDE. The only thing that needs to do is just to replace the a set of noise to be like ex to be an expectation, and after that they can somehow rewritten their training objective to be like the uh, SD up update functions and utilizing the standard SD. Uh, SD solver to learn this kind of, uh, to train the whole models. And uh, also one very interesting thing is that suppose that they, uh, they, the, 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 they move the, the DT part to be, to be the left-hand side, they can somehow change this SDE to be ODE. And in that case, uh, it is no longer a, a stochastic version, but some just to treat, uh, utilizing their like a, a learned or scored function distribution to directly have a smooth curve trajectory to transample the data points. So somehow like this. So in, instead of like adding the noise at each, at each step, it's somehow just uh, following their learning score functions to, uh, to following this ODE trajectory to sample the data points. But still learning this ODE still require that uh, utilizing, utilizing the previous SDE like objective. But, but after they get this trajectory, they can somehow utilize the ODE solver to directly sample the data points, which is much faster. And also, since the ODE have the like uh, the very nice property of doing the integration, they can directly utilizing the, the final ODE's uh, like a, a output as the likelihood to estimate a new data sample, whether it is from a certain distribution. But in in, in this their cases, they didn't really have the distribution, but just have the score based function by utilizing ODE to integrate the 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 likelihood. Okay, this is a very uh, quick introduction of uh, of the score based functions and uh, comparing the continuous version with uh, this uh, like the uh, uh, SDE with ODE. I have uh, the the SDE version have like uh, have a uh, like an advantage that uh, the, it can allow the continuous noise injection and help to get somehow better like a uh, generated accuracy and because somehow the noise can help to somehow explore more spaces and uh, uh, somehow have a higher diversity to get the results. But uh, it is, the SD, since it, uh, it still needs to do multiple iteration it is relatively small, slower. And, uh, and also like uh, the stochastic term itself somehow requires some discretization during, during the solving. But the ODE part, uh, the other, most advantage is that in the mathematical and uh, the numerical calculation domain, people have developed very, very uh, many, very good ODE solvers to quickly gather results so that uh, they can even gather high, uh, like faster sampling uh, like speed than some game-based methods by just calling the ODE solver. But the 
consists that they somehow still require some stochastic, uh, if their scope function is not uh, trained too much, too well, there's still some spaces that they didn't explore too much. And uh, uh, if without the, the stochastic noise, uh, maybe the eventual diversity is, uh, is, is, is lower than SD ones. So right now, uh, uh, like most of the existing, uh, like SOTA image generation models still utilizing the diffusion methods, methods but not the, 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 this kind of score-based methods. Mostly it's still because like the efficiency and like, uh, pers uh, like issues. If they're utilizing the SD versions, then it is still somewhat slow and OD version is not that uh, as good as like the SD ones, but still uh, on the, the, the region uh, domains that are like, uh, the data points are not that large scale. This kind of score-based method have very, very uh, impressive results and uh, even better than some diffusion methods. So recently, uh, I think they have some many work following up works trying to combine these two domain. And uh, they, I, I just take se uh, like a, several sentences written by Song Yang's uh, blog, blog post to somehow finish maybe today's presentation. So, so that yeah, you, before that, I think Fred had has a question. Oh, comment. sure. Yeah, so I just want to add a comment on the scalability issue of SDE based method in the uh, in their paper. Basically, in order to have really good samples, they they not only apply the numeric SDE software, they they also apply the uh, correction step using some MCMC uh, sampling algorithms, which further slows down their sample generation. So that's also a big reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the original 2021 paper, they still have some this kind of uh, issues. But uh, later on, I think uh, they, uh, not their group, but uh, I, I, I look at the several of the recent following up works that it didn't really take the like the original SDE, but maybe just a, a jump state of SDE, or also some like a method that's similar to the like, momentum-based method to, for example, not all, Take the tr tr whole trajectory by just taking some maybe some ten steps or four steps, somehow similar to a diffusion method, but uh, like based on their estimated score to get good results. So I think uh, maybe this two line will be converged eventually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is somehow also mentioned in, as I said in like Sonia's blog post, uh, which I think is very like uh, inspiring me and also very interesting. So their scope is most method and the diffusion method are somehow conducted by two different groups that didn't know each other too much. And, uh, but it's simultaneously utilizing some similar methods of uh, uh, trying to inject in the noise perturbation and following like the, uh, like, like, the, like the procedure to somehow getting the generative procedure uh, methods. So they, uh, Song Yang draws analogy with the wave mechanism and the matrix mechanism in the quantum uh, in, in the histories that are most uh, derived from the quantum mechanisms. So, uh, but the perspective of these two methods are somehow different from each other. So, the uh, diffusion method mostly for uh, like draws inspiration from the traditional VAE and uh, the the variational upper bounds and the variational inference and this kind of methods. And uh, the score-based methods are somehow like a reinvent from scratch. And uh, they, they, they utilize the, the basic idea intuition as I introduced today is that they want to get rid of like the normalizing term. And uh, by utilize, estimating a good gradient uh, like landscape, they can somehow utilize in some uh, physical sampler such as Lagrange dynamics to, to sample the data points. But eventually if to make that, that, that the method work, they, they f eventually like uh, converge to a method that have multiple scale of noises. And uh, yeah, I think uh, this line of research is very inspiring and also recently combined with the fundamental image vision and the text models. People have already seen lots of good use case and uh, surprising good generative results, like even better than the previous, like again results. So uh, I'm also in, in this thread of reading group, we also have many, uh, instead of just uh, image generation, we also have many interesting applications such as graph and the molecule design and uh, like uh, some, some other like uh, utilizing diffusion to do the planning and to do some reasonings, which are also very interesting topics. So I think hopefully uh, after this course reading group, we can know better this line of research. And 
let's see what of this kind of direction will go in the future. Yeah, that's all for today's presentation. Thank you, Tsinyu. Uh, there's a question from Frank. So do you want to comment? Uh, in the chat box. Do they provide any better theoretical bound? Uh, they didn't provide any theoretical bound. <laughs> I think uh, like uh, this kind of generative me methods uh, domain didn't have the theoretical bound, but uh, what they can provide are two things. First is that whether they can have like a uh, better local likelihood or, or like a somehow like uh, it's similar to like the, the, the pure general machine learning problems. The first question is that whether the pro, their estimated, uh, uh, their generative model can recover the training sets, which they call the, the likelihood estimation. And the other case is like how they can generate to some new samples, given some different compositional like queries and uh, have some more diversities. Compared with the log likelihood part, it is get a similar results with scan and much, much better result than VAE. The VAE actually didn't have didn't perform too well recent days. And uh, regarding to the diversity, the GAN result is not very good. So, the re uh, so my general thinking is that uh, the diffusion method, since the adding of the noise, they have a good, uh, the, the better advantage of like a reaching like more diverse data points. And even with a simple, for example, for text to image sampling, even with a sing, uh, single text prompt, they can generate with thousands or even more samples that are very different from each other. But mo most of them are somehow looking reasonable. This is not a very uh, like easy to be seen utilizing uh, some GAN methods. Yeah. And uh, for hyperparameters, yeah, as I said, uh, um, Still, this research line is very uh, still like like uh, fast growing, and uh, there are many people are like proposing their new works. Uh, the most important hyperparameters, for example, the number of steps and uh, the scaling, uh, the dynamics are like uh, 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 still under de developed. If you are interested, you can see this paper. I didn't look too in detail, but uh, there's a reason. Uh, most recent, actually, 2022 best paper by like. Uh, like a Jun's group, uh, they somehow propose a, a novel, like a hyperparameter, like a, not a tuning, but a simultaneously learning method called analytic BPM. Yeah. I just uh, roughly got the idea, but didn't look in detail. They have many, many like uh, mathematical derivation that I didn't have <laughs> got a chance to really look in detail. But I think that paper might, can, uh, might solve some of your questions. And uh, regarding to comparison between this kind of method compared with scan, I think it is an easy answer question. Right now, the diffusion model are like um, significantly better than GAN. It, regarding to like a, like a generating a real instance, not just uh, like a memorizing the training sets. And uh, yeah, regarding to the ASCII part, I think, um, yeah, that is very interesting, but um, I'm not an expert of that direction, but yeah, I'm I'm very uh, like interesting to see how this kind of direction and community will go, and uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I have a related question. Uh, just for now, practically, for the score-based approach and the diffusion model-based approach, which one is better? So, um, diffusion-based mo uh, diffusion model proposed earlier. So uh, it's empirical ones and uh, the workable solution is in 2020. So uh, most of the ones that I showed today, for example, the one in OpenAI and uh, the Google's, they utilize in a diffusion method because like their coding is somehow sim simpler. But for the, uh, the score-based method, since they require some SDE, they somehow, right now, they, they are somehow harder to conduct a large scale training. So for that kind of like the, for those big news, they mostly just utilizing diffusion model, mostly for scalability issue. But since Song Yang is joining OpenAI this year, so I, I think they they have the probability to solve some solve this kind of scalability issue and then probably make shifting their SD with like GPT or the other like uh, Dali and uh, this kind of the generating models. But right now the whole the the the, the big 
the, the better method might be diffusion-based method. Yeah. I see. But just curious for the efficiencies you talked about, is it mainly coming from the OD part? The SD part. Uh, okay, the SD part, the solver part. Yeah, the, the, OD, the OD method is that uh, didn't get a better result, uh, performs a slightly worse than the SD version. So if they, you want to get the most uh, better, uh, the best results, for, for example, in post-diffusion SD, they have some noise. I think it is very essential to get uh, a high diversity result. For ODE, mm -hmm. if most likely their generated results are somehow similar with each other, which is not very good. And yeah. Meaning the noise part is very essential. Like yeah, yeah, ODE yeah. is faster, right? SD is like yeah. slow. Yeah. Okay. So for some small scale the applications, for example, image editing or some like uh, some more specific uh, like a data sets, uh, this kind of score-based method sometimes, uh, and in many cases, performs better than diffusion-based method. Mm -hmm. But for like like those kind of most uh, large-scale versions, and I think still the diffusion method works slightly well you know, at this stage. But we didn't know what will future will go. You know. I see. Yeah, great. And also, you mentioned that we're going to discuss lots of interesting applications, including graph or like discrete type data, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Really looking think, forward to that. Mm. I think starting from next week, we are discussing applications mostly. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Any other questions and comments? Okay. So, if not, we'll probably stop here. Thank you. Thank you, bye.